Hey kids, today's show is brought to you by the letter 4 and the number potato! I'm a stupid private. Previously on the Transformers. Optimus Prime and the Autobots blew up a robo-forming doodad called the Omega Lock that Megatron repurposed into a doomsday weapon. That con could repurpose a baby food maker into a super weapon. Respect. So the day is saved. Sort of. The Decepticons are now in possession of a big... Doom Fortress in the middle of Nevada. And the first order of business is blowing Autobot headquarters back to Kingdom Come, with the great hero Optimus Prime himself still inside. And that leads us to the first episode of the final season of Transformers Prime, subtitled Beast Hunters. I'm starting off with a brief summation of the episode titled Dark Mount Nevada, so spoiler warnings. The episode begins with Megatron and friends looking to do a little redecorating at their new citadel with any charred Autobot corpses left lying around. Meanwhile, the Autobots have been scattered across the country, along with their human friends. RC and Jack are in Nebraska, for some reason. Mako and Bulkhead are roving the Colorado Rockies. Bumblebee sporting a stylish new paint job, and that one kid... What's his name? Good question! But I don't care! are out somewhere. Ratchet, on the other hand, is MIA, and the big man, er, Bot, Optimus Prime, is currently lying injured inside of a cave under the tender ministries of Nurse Hot Rod. I mean, smokescreen. I measure his remaining life in hours. With special guest Wheeljack, resting comfortably at Starscream's day spa. The service is just to die for. Over the course of the episode, we see Megatron strengthen his grip on power by collecting the remaining relics of Iacon, and engaging in a little geopolitical gamesmanship by harassing the military and Agent Fowler over the phone. The Decepticon Warlord is currently in possession of Solus Prime's Big Hammer, the Apex Armor, a kind of power armor for vehicle-sized robots. So some of that redundant technology. As well as an arachnid, on ice, of course. We also saw the return of beloved Decepticon science officer, Shockwave. So awesome. It seems like the Autobots' darkest hour. Scattered, soon to be leaderless by any indication, and thanks to Soundwave, unable to communicate with the outside world or each other. Not to be melodramatic, but broken. Seems apt. Just like the toys after three rounds with a five-year-old. From a storytelling perspective, if you're going to overpower one side in the epic, never-ending battle between good and evil, evil is the logical choice. Because the good guys winning every single time easily tends to get boring. But obviously, overpowered villains leads to some WTF moments. Looking at you on this one, Korra when the good guys inevitably win. This is a set-up episode more than anything that's meant to kick off the Beast Hunters arc. So on my rating system, just take my negative comments with a grain of salt. But let's start with some positives. This episode really excels at atmosphere. The sense of doom is thicker than Bulkhead's waistline. From the smoldering wreckage of Autobot headquarters to the blighted landscape of Cybertron, you get the sense that the Decepticons have all but stomped out any resistance. The action in this episode is also fair to decent. The main action set piece begins when RC's human tagalong Jack tries to text his mommy. Loser. His location is immediately found by Patriot Act advocate Soundwave, who dispatches a couple red shirts and a lame version of Laserbeak to intercept. This is about as good an excuse as any to watch RC kick Major <laughs> There's also a neat scene involving the military that would deeply disappoint Michael Bay. Oh, and Shockwave's back. On the downside, this episode really exists just to start off Season 3, and really doesn't stand on its own, especially because it's basically a continuation of the events from the Season 2 season finale. So what I'm saying is, this is not really a good place for new viewers to jump on. Oh, and Optimus Prime seems to be dying. Again. I'm sorry, is this a thing? Does Optimus Prime really need to die every single iteration of Transformers and then come back? I mean, both him and Megatron walk off death like Superman and Dracula, respectively. And frankly, I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of it like I'm sick of Leomon's crap. And also, what is it with the new shows not being able to get Laserbeak right? In Dark of the Moon, he had way too much personality. In Prime, he doesn't really have enough. More reduced to a part of Soundwave rather than an entity unto himself. He's a robot hawk that spies on people. That's his thing. That's what he does. But all gripes aside, this is a good way to start off the last season of Transformers Prime. I give it a 4 out of 5. Stay tuned for more, and thanks for watching.